there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. There are times in anyone's life where they feel self-pity, they feel that the world's against them for whatever reason, and it's making sure that you don't stay in those moments. Yay, we made it! The conference, it's working with people, it's supporting people to come together. Because when people come together, that's when all the excitement happens. That's when change happens, that's when people are supported. Just seeing Park with that group last night and it was having a ball, so and one of the guys said, Oh yeah, he's with his Acon crew. So like, Yeah, he's found you know, his that's... people. <laughs> he's found his people. My name is Lauren. I am from originally from Whangarei and slowly been moving down the island to Puniki to Wellington. So I've been here a couple of years now, which is great. I am married to my husband Mark. All my family is average height, and uh, at the time, now now they test, they can pick it up a lot earlier. They have a lot more scans, all those sorts of things. But I came out uh, with a large forehead and they're like, oh, there's something a bit different. But my mum was like, if it doesn't impact on the health of my baby right now, like I just want to enjoy my newborn baby. So um, if it's nothing life threatening, then we can deal with it a little bit later on. And so maybe within the first six months or so, I was officially diagnosed with a chondroplasia. One thing I'm really grateful for my parents is that I always grew up knowing that I was different. But they're just like, you're Lauren and you're a little person and you've got a chondroplasia and this is how you spell it and good luck. Um, <laughs> so like, I was never that great at spelling at school, but I could spell a chondroplasia. <clears throat> And I'm just going to quickly put Jerry yeah. here. Going. <laughs> <laughs> going. <laughs> My name's Kendall Tulangi, and I'm from Born and Bred Southender. And this is Polly. Uh, my name is Pale Tuilangi and um, I was born in Samoa and uh, I moved over here when I was seven and I've uh, been over here since, so. Quick, quick, quick. Wow. With the characteristics of achondroplasia, for Parker, his head is bigger than someone his age without achondroplasia. His um, long bones in his arms are shorter, so this shoulder to his elbow is shorter, his thigh bone is shorter, and his hands are gorgeous little starfish hands, which I love. Um, so you can see here, his hands don't go together like ours. They kind of spread out like a starfish. They call them, I think the medical term is trident hands. You really like those biscuits, don't you? Mum might have to get some more. I am currently a senior engagement advisor at the Abuse and Care Royal Commission of Inquiry. I've always worked in roles where I feel that there is some reward to New Zealanders, and this totally aligned, the kaupapa of this totally aligned with where I want to work. I just love working with people. I love being around people. And it's even, you know, the conference, it's, it's working with people. It's, it's supporting people to come together. And, and when, because when people come together, that's when all the excitement happens. That's when all the, um, that's when change happens. That's when people are supported. Yeah, no, that looks much better. There we go. Yeah. Always love working with people. And, and if it's something that makes a difference, then yeah, can't say no to it. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye. 
Yeah. Then one day I was just like, no. Nah. Thanks, God. Yeah. yeah, I love that one. Everything, well, that 23 week one, everything was sweet. But I do remember in the very first scan, we had the dating scan, which must have been this one. Um, she did say he had a big head. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, poor me. <laughs> like, yeah. that's going to be, that's going to be hard. He said it could be dwarfism, it could be Down syndrome, it could be a mixture. He didn't know. We got sent to Christchurch. They originally weren't going to send us there. They were like, oh, we'll just discuss it up here. Because by that stage, I was 38 weeks. <laughs> but yeah, they, and then they set us in a room for about an hour. And then they came in and set us down and kind of like, do you know why you're here? And do you understand anything about this? And we were still kind of like, not really, like, I guess we knew what we'd sort of researched ourselves, but it was all still just guessing. And then she said that it looks from the scans um, that it was a lethal skeletal dysplasia. Yeah, they just said from what they saw on the scan, his ribcage wasn't big enough to house his lungs, pretty much. Yeah. But he survived. But yeah, from there we had to go, they said his Best chance of survival would be to have him in Dunedin with a specialist team there, because he was um, breached as well, so I had to have a C-section. Hello, Papa. Good morning. Hi. What are you doing? Did you have a nice big sleep? Hey? Did you have a nice big sleep? Like, his lungs weren't developed properly, so pretty much as soon as he was born, he wasn't going to be able to breathe on his own. And, and it was a minute 47 or something for him to start breathing, but it felt like about half an hour. But yeah, once we heard that screaming anyways. Yeah, he, so he had his own team in the theatre and they just took him straight away, did what they needed to do, and then the doctor came over and he grabbed my arm and he said, he's, he's fine, he's, he's OK, he's going to be OK, he's, he's a little person and he's going to be fine. It was pretty tough. Mm. Um, it was quite, it's kind of like thinking back now, it's kind of just like a blur. It was just, yeah, one foot in front of the other and just try and stay as positive as we could, eh? That sort of got us through. It was just pretty much just staying positive. Are you pretty comfortable there? He's doing the thumb thing. What surprised me most, uh, probably just, Seeing like uh, each week's in that like, like I said earlier on, he's he's getting better and better in it. So just the wee changes and, and stuff like that. So you roll the ball? which is good. Ready? <laughs> and throw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So tomorrow we have the first day of the 50th annual Little People of New Zealand conference, which is really exciting. One thing that's on my mind, just all the last minute things, you know, it looks like stuff that pops up that you think you've thought about and you're like, oh yeah, I've got that sorted, but then you don't, or um, people's plans change and all that when you're dealing with a large group of people. So just all those little things of, you know, the final checklist, which is in my mind now. Went to the first conference in 1992, when I was one in New Plymouth, and my parents just absorbed so much. You know, they're taking, they're watching everyone, they're talking to parents. I'm sure, I think Katrina was there, so I'm sure they would have been talking to them. You know, Katrina's parents about raising a, a girl and, and what they need to be mindful of, what they, you know, how to support them, but not wrap them in cotton wool, all those sorts of things. So it was, yeah, it's been such a phenomenal organisation for my whole family, the support that it's given. I quite like that one. Yeah, that's nice. Is it got a bit of blue in it, eh? Oh, it's kind of got a blue tinge, yeah. Yeah, that's quite nice, yeah. My name's Katrina, and my husband's a little person as well, and he's Canadian. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> And yes, and we have three children, and so the first, the two eldest have a chondroplasia. And my dear youngest, 
who is six, is average height and um, nearly as tall as me. So that in itself is a new kind of thing to pioneer. And I'm the president of LPNZ. <laughs> so I have been since last year. So I've just done my first term. And along with Lauren as well, we have been um, coordinating this year's 50th conference. But I've been a part of LPNZ for 40 of the 50 years. Seeing people that I've known for 27 years, um, and it's also seeing people for the very first time that I've never met. So it's... That's right. Nice. Ciao. Very nice. Sorry. Like match our rings. Match your match. Oh, similar rings. Similar rings. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. We are going to the 50th anniversary for the um, LPNZ conference in Wellington. So, um, Little People of New Zealand conference that we've been members of since Parker was about four months old, I think. For us, it's all about education. Um, as I said before, Parker's the youngest one going, so there's nothing really that we can't learn off someone or some family there um, because they've all been, we're Parker's age now, so. Yeah, whether it's where to shop for clothes, what to do if, you know, some, if they've had the same surgery we're waiting on, just getting all that education and finding out. <laughs> so normally it's one in 45,000, or they say 27 to 45,000 chance of having a baby with dwarfism, but because Parker's our first, um, our chances are one in 200. So. Next time we have a baby, there's a one in 200 chance of having a baby with achondroplasia. Yes, we um, definitely want to add to the family. Yeah, Parker would be an amazing big brother, big little brother. Yeah, um, not too sure when, but um, all in good time. Yeah, definitely. And the geneticist actually said, you know, does that worry you? Are you nervous? Like, does that scare you? And I said, we both said no. Like, Parker's all we know, we love him and we're, we're equipped for a little person. Um, and he said, if you raise a kid to be kind, they'll get further in life than a kid that is tall. And I was like, I like you. You're my people. Yeah, he was cool. Lauren's amazing. I feel like I know Lauren already. So I've been speaking with her. She's actually organising um, a huge part of the conference this year. Um, I have spoken to her on the phone multiple times and on Facebook, so I feel like she's a friend already, so I can't wait to meet her. Katrina and I are quite tall for a lot of little people. I know that might sound surprising. So often we've had to think a lot because uh, short stature is, is a, a lot of heights and a, and, a, and a lot of different access needs. So making sure that we've got enough stuff. So we've got like a lifetime supply of stools around for bathrooms, for breakfast buffets, for speeches on Saturday night, the bar that needs a stool. We need a bar, like, you can't access the bar. That's, that's not a conference. That would be a disaster. That would be a massive disaster. We've all grown up in an average height society, so we're used to having to make compromises. We're used to having to drag stools with us places. We're used to having to ask people to get some stuff down. And, and that's why my husband's coming, really. It's the only reason why he's coming, <laughs> is to get everything down for everybody. So I met Mark when we were at university, probably about oh, maybe six years ago now. Uh, and we were both in the student union together. My son. Lock my son. 
I do tell people that I only married him for his height to make supermarket shopping a lot easier, which is great. If the people know us, they crack up laughing, they like laugh. But if you say, learn not to say it to a stranger in the supermarket, because they just look at you like, what? <laughs> Um, but, I mean, it, it's always been there. It's always been a difference. Um, and it's, it's never, I've never felt like it's been a bigger issue. Because he just knows that the way I'm looking or the way I'm thinking or the way I've responded to something that um, I do want help or equally is picking up when I don't want help. And that's probably a, a huge thing in the relationship because you don't want to always feel like they're always on, you know, they're always thinking, oh, how do I help them? Do I need to help them? Do I? Because then you kind of get that, that burden feeling, I think. And um, as he started to pick up when I'm comfortable, when I'm not comfortable in situations, and it's not just around height things, it's around people's attitudes, it's around people's responses, um, all that sort of stuff. So as, as that relationship grows and you get to know each other so incredibly well that um, everything's just so much more natural. This will be my fourth conference, so got them pretty down pat by now, I think. But this is like my first full time, always on site. <laughs> I, I enjoy working for him, especially putting up things like this. <laughs> He's just saying it because. <laughs> He knows that he's got a he's got a lot more tasks coming to him. Yeah, she um, just tells me what to do. I do it. I ask you nicely. Are we putting this all the way out? I know because we're gonna clip the thing on it first. The... Let's see. Whoa! We're making good use of that store there. Yeah. Where to put your big Yeah, so conference is finally here. People have, have got our first guests starting to arrive, which is really exciting. Sorry. And now we're just doing the, trying to dress up the room, trying to dress up the space a little bit to make it feel really kind of party atmosphere, because it's a party. <laughs> It's a little bit overwhelming at times because it's 50 years of an organisation that's been run on volunteers. It's I kind of say that it's an organisation that's been run on the smell of barbecue fundraisers at Bunnings. It's not a big organisation. It's not an organisation that uh, has the capacity to be going out and getting grants and fundraising and all that because we've got such a small membership. Um, so I think the other day I counted, I think this is about my... 24th or my 25th Little People's Conference. Um, so it's pretty exciting. It's been all I've ever known. I'm in love, he's my child, he's, he's definitely mine, we look the same, we could be, definitely, I could, I could claim him, gets his, yeah, gets his good looks, it's the Akon good looks anyway. Oh. Oh, okay, so first conference. As soon as I saw Kendall, I was like, ah! You know, I rang her on the way then, I was like, where are you? I miss you. And I was like, I don't actually know you, but I miss you <laughs> like that. Because we just seemed to hit her off straight away on the phone and all that. <laughs> Sorry, was that a yeah, I feel like I've known her for years. Um, she's done such an amazing job organising yeah. all this. And Parker took to her like a duck to water, didn't yeah. you? They clicked straight away. Yeah. yeah. It was like they'd met before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you agree? Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> oh. To 
have these guys see each other once a year is just like the bees' knees. Come on in, find yourself a seat. Oh, they've saved you a seat. Look but thank you all for coming. Yay, we've made it 50 years! <laughs> wow, we've started, it's all go. We've had the launch. Uh, everything's going so far, so good. There's been a lot of hard work, but we're so glad that you guys have all come and committed to being here to be able to celebrate with us. Um, you will hear more stories over the weekend about how this came about um, and how it all originated in Wellington, which is so exciting to be back in the capital to where it began 50 years ago. So that is absolutely awesome. Um, I just encourage you guys to make the most of connecting with past friendships, new friendships, and also meeting people you may not know as well as what you thought you did. I'm just literally propping myself up against this wall right now as I stop. But no, really good. Awesome. I think there are times in anyone's life where they feel um, self-pity, they feel that the world's against them for whatever reason, and it's um, making sure that you don't stay in those moments. It's so easy to get into them, but the longer that you're in them, the harder it is to get out. Yes, you can have bad days. And also, it's OK to have bad days. Like, it's OK where you're like, Far out, this just sucks. Like, you know, like, I, I, I want to be different, or I just want to go to the supermarket and I don't want anyone to stare at me, or, or, I, or I just want to, you know, not have days where I think if, if I'm applying for a job, do I highlight that I'm a little person, or do I not? You know, like, I, I, and it's okay to have those moments, I think, but it's just making sure that you don't kind of wallow in them because it, that just holds you back so much. And because we've, my parents have always pushed us. And, and Mark now, he pushes me as well, you know, expects the best out of me. I found that really helpful. Hey. Yeah, it has. It has been pretty helpful because, like I said before, you know, everybody's been welcoming and, it's, and it just makes it easier, so... Um, There's I another just... family here with a wee boy who's four and he's had the surgery that Parker's... Uh, we're waiting on um, Parker to have, so I've like talked to her briefly about it, but um, yeah, I'll be definitely asking her a few questions of what we need to be doing for prep and what to expect and stuff. And I think for me, it's just meeting other cool kids and that and parents with um, Acon. So that's, that's pretty much what I'm looking forward to. Just seeing Parker with, with that group last night, and there was having a ball, so... Yeah, he was, eh? And one of the guys said, oh, yeah, he's with his Acon crew, so... Like, yeah, he's found you know, his that's... people. <laughs> he's found his people. most conferences we ever just go that's themed. And I thought superheroes is something that people can get involved in to whatever level. Like, if they want to get all into it and do the full costume, then that's great. But if they just want to chuck on a cape, then that's also cool. No, I've always loved the dress-ups evening, so it's always been fun. People are going to be like, oh, look at her costume, not like, oh, there's a little person dressed up in a costume. I'm going to take a photo or something like that. Uh, so you can just, yeah, feel confident to, to dress up and, and know that you're, you're with your peers. Definitely, I'm so stoked that Judy can make it this year. She organised the first couple of conferences, you know, 51 years ago when she was first looking at bringing everyone or bringing little people together around New Zealand uh, so that there could be an association. You know, this is going to be our biggest conference in a while. I think we're looking at about 
70 to 80 little people on site um, throughout the weekend and it's, it's growing so hopefully she can sit back and be like wow and I just yeah, hope that we've done her proud. I hope that this weekend she's like yeah this is, this is what I imagined in 50 years. We had no money, we had no computers, yeah. um, we had no contacts other than telephone and, and that all cost money to ring yeah. all around the world. Whereas now you just jump on the computer and you're like, yeah, little I people know. New Zealand yeah. or dwarfers of New Zealand <laughs> and out comes all the information. Well, that yeah. was it, you know, I mean, uh, I was trying to, to work out why um, my son was different and, and then all of a sudden it just clicked, you know, I'm looking at dwarfism. Um, where do I go for help? And you don't need Mother Duck anymore. Yes, we don't. We really, really, really don't blame us. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's been fun. It's so, been fun. Yeah. Oh, well. So, I always like the time, a chance to give back to the organisation in, in some way. And if it's and this is certainly how you're doing it. You, you really are. And you're just giving the parents the opportunity to see the children in different stages of growing up. Look, thank you so much. Mm. Mm. Take care. Mm. You too. I'll see you later on. Yep. We've come so far as, as a country, and, and I really hope that we just use this weekend to celebrate that because it's so, it is tough, but far out we've come far, and we need to be proud of ourselves. As I said, we're a small organisation um, that is run on, on volunteer power, and, and it's we rely on everyone to make those changes. So, yes, yeah, so hopefully, we. we reward ourselves and pat ourselves on the back of, of, of what we've come through and, and how far we've come, but also not lose track of, of where we've got to go and, and how we can do that. It's felt like we were coming home to family and yeah, everyone's been super welcoming and you can see that here. You can see why it's been going for 50 years because it is so well run and everyone is so welcoming. Um, and Parker will probably still be coming in yeah, another 50 yeah, years time. Another 50 years. Maybe with his family. Yeah. I'm just really proud that um, LPNZ has come together and given uh, the celebration that 50 years deserves. And it's a yeah, really special, special birthday. So I've still... Um, so we've still got a few more checkouts and that to arrange and sort out and make sure that people are in the right taxis, uh, on the plane and all that. So I'd better go and sort that out and then I'll uh, be seeing my, my pillow. So thank you so much for an awesome weekend and here's to the next 50 years.